Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Tyler and this is my tabletop. Today we are finally getting back into our painting. Uh, we are painting a Panzer IV Office G variant. Uh, this model is from Warlord Games for their Bolt Action series. Uh, we assembled this a while ago. Uh, I will post the link to the relevant video in the description. Uh, just like all my other tanks, I am following the uh, German Army Painting Guide for Bolt Action. Uh, it's published by Warlord Games. They have a PDF for sale on their website. I really like it, and since I've painted all my other tanks with that, we're going to use it. There's really not any a lot of variation, uh, and since <laughs> we have painted a lot of these, um, I'll be brief and just go with uh, my standard you're watching me paint thing and uh, play some music over it. Uh, everything's getting two watered down coats um, except for the black later on. So first off, uh, this has been primed white, obviously. And um, I used a large... I undercoated with uh, Vallejo Middlestone, two coats, that's this yellowish brown. Um, I did not paint this one gray beforehand. Um, I don't recall doing that on any of my others either, So, but that is what they say for step one. I don't do that. Uh, anyway, uh, then I went with the brown and the green camo uh, lines. The brown is Vallejo Chocolate Brown, and the green is Vallejo Reflective Green. Uh, once those are done, I put the decals on, um, and then I did a little bit of touch-up because I had some problems with the decals. But uh, once the decals are good and dry, I went over the entire model with... Uh, they call for using AP Strong Tone. Um, I did not... Um, I do not have Army Painter Strong Tone. Uh, instead, I was using I'm using my local poly uh, poly shade. It's Verathian. Get it at Home Depot. Uh, Pecan is the color I use, which is pretty close to Strong Tone. Uh, after that dried, I went back and hit the flat spots with some more Middle Stone just to bring them back up a little bit. Uh, then I went over all the spots that needed to be metal with or all the spots that needed to be metal or rubber with uh, standard black matte black um, then I hit the tracks and all the metal bits I hit with a coat of uh, gun metal And then finally, I went and did my muddy effect, uh, which is um, it's red. Uh, it's Vallejo red le red leather and uh, Vallejo chocolate brown. Those only got one coat a piece, um, and as usual, those are great for hitting the uh, little mistakes. So. Anyway, that's the process I'm going to follow, so I'm going to speed this up even more than the two times it's already in, and play some music for you guys, and I will catch up to you in a little bit.
Uh, as you can see, I had a little bit of trouble, but that's what there's multiple numbers on the decal sheet for. Uh, so scrape it off and, <laughs> and pick a different number for this particular hull. Uh, also, I totally didn't follow the instructions and wet the area that I was putting them on, so that's kind of what was giving me some grief. Uh, follow the instructions for water decals, ladies and gents. Um, that is my hint for not making mistakes like I was making, because I was in a hurry. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to it.
And time to put the brown on top of the reddish brown, and then uh, we'll call it done. And actually, I <laughs> did the turntable shot so soon after this that some of the paint is still wet. But uh, we'll get to the turntable shot, and I will wrap us up. And that's going to wrap us up. Uh, I like this paint scheme. I think it really unifies and looks good on the tabletop. So that's why I keep doing it. It's also pretty easy to put together uh, in terms of a paint scheme. Uh, not really sure what the next video will be. Um, but I guess I'll keep you guys in suspense for that one. <laughs> if you like it, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Tyler. This has been my tabletop. And I will talk to you guys soon.